Okay, so today we are looking at a multimedia creation workstation known as AV Linux. Now, AV Linux is based on Debian 5.0. So all I can say there is that this distribution is rock solid stability wise, which I think goes very well considering the purpose of this distribution. And if you couldn't have guessed by now, it is to do with all things multimedia, whether it is music creation, graphics, web development, uh, video production, or audio processing, anything to do with media, this distribution has you covered. It is an ultimate powerhouse and showcase of Linux multimedia tools uh, built on top of a rock solid Debian base. So let's get into it. First of all, this, uh, this desktop environment is of course LXDE. Now, by default, they do use the Openbox Window Manager as it is nice and lightweight and won't distract from the uh, from the work that you're trying to get done. So the theme is quite nice. It's just a nice, simple grey theme with uh, a few blue highlights. And, of course, we've got the Faenza Cupertino icon set, which looks very nice indeed. So let's get straight onto the applications because this is where most of the bulk is. So under applications, we have a bucket load of stuff. Now I could go through here in the menu, which I might do depending, we'll see how this goes. So first of all, under accessories, basically the idea behind this distribution is to provide a, a an out of the box operating system that can function perfectly well without an internet connection, but it provides all the best Linux multimedia applications that you can muster into one operating system. So it's all ready to go as soon as you install it. Now the installation was a bit of a pain, but I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. So first under accessories, we just have your basic LXDE stuff, including Shutter, uh, which obviously isn't basic LXDE, but that is the best screencasting tool or screenshot tool available to Linux as of right now. So that is a good inclusion. Audio, we have bucket loads of stuff. As you can see, we've got everything from CD players, CD rippers, drum machines, we've got samplers, we've got all sorts of jack, GUIs, and plugins, and we've got all sorts of recording. We've got Rackerack for your electric guitar, we've got the uh, we've got the piano note uh, note taking stuff here, and we've got all sorts of stuff which I've never even seen before. Rose Garden is uh, audio editor, as is Ardua. Uh, you can see up the top here. Honestly, they have got a lot of stuff in here. Linux Multimedia Studio is basically like uh, Fruity Loops almost. Also, you've got a few Wine tools as well, as uh, they weren't able to find uh, tools under Linux that did the job, so they found uh, tools for Windows that work just as well, which is nice to see. Uh, so they've really done a great job here as far as audio-wise. You are very well catered for, and somebody would just be able to install this on their very powerful rig and go nuts. Now here under graphics we have uh, FontForge, which is uh, obviously a font creation station. We've got GNOME Photo Printer, we've got GIMP, Inkscape, we've got a Lightscribe labeler, which is very rare to see, so it's great to see that. And we've got MyPaint, which is the organic paintbrush painting tool. So you can see here you can use different brushes, and uh, and it emulates different uh, brush strokes. So uh, it's it's a quite an amazing application, as I've said before. I have seen this application around, and it does amazing things for uh, considering how much these sort of applications cost in the commercial world. Uh, now, under Internet, we just have a few basic tools here. FileZilla for uploading your files for web development, Composer for web development. We've also got Java, and we've got IceWeasel as your browser, which is practically an unbranded Firefox, and we've got XChat IC and Transmission, uh, which is just basic GNOME stuff, really. Uh, Jack plugins. We've got a bunch of Jack plugins, so if you use Jack, now Jack is basically a middleman between your sound card and the applications you are using. You can pile up uh, different audio inputs and then uh, output them specifically, sometimes even in real time, based on what you want to do. So that's basically for plugging in instruments, plugging in uh, extra sound effects on top of that, and that's where these Jack plugins come in handy. Now don't ask me any more on how these things function, because honestly, I don't know. That is about the limit of my knowledge, but I'm definitely interested in this kind of thing. Uh, now, uh, Office, they do actually give you the full LibreOffice suite, which is quite convenient of them, as uh, honestly, you don't really have many other needs here. Uh, preferences, we've just got uh, basic stuff here. We've just got the Sun Java stuff. We've also got the WBAR dock, which there is a shortcut icon down, down here on the taskbar, and it just puts a nice little dock up here that's quite a lightweight little one indeed. So I actually have not seen this dock before, but uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it looks nice with the phones, um icon set, and uh, I think it complements it quite well. 
We've also got the About AV Linux Appearance and all that fun stuff that we know and love, Openbox. And we've also got Remaster Sys, which is what this whole distribution is kind of built with. Um, and of course, we've got Synaptic for your package management, etc. You can also use Compiz if you so wish, or you can use Emerald. And they do have very good documentation on how to do all that stuff. Uh, now, under Programming, we just have Fluid, Composer, and Remaster Sys Dev Builder which is, again, uh, some of the tools that they've used to build this distribution. Composer, of course, being a what-you-see-is-what-you-get web development. And Fluid, I'm not entirely sure what that is, so we'll just open it and have a look anyway. And apparently it failed to execute, so that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, sound card utilities. Now, uh, sound cards are extremely flexible under Linux. You have a whole bunch of plug-in uh, mixers and amplifiers based on what you want to do. So basically, you're... Your base level one is your GNOME ALSA mixer, and then from there you can do you can use all these different mixes and controls to configure your sound card to get the most out of it, basically, for however many inputs, outputs you might have. Uh, system tools, uh, just the same basic stuff again with, uh, uh, with the addition of UNET boot, and, and of course we've got the Compass Fusion icon there. And video, we've got a bunch of stuff as well. This is where I really have some fun. Avid Emux, Blender, uh, Bombono DVD, Cheese, Cinerella, Desktop Recorder, DVD, Handbrake, Caden Live, Lives, uh, Media Info, Movie Player, OpenShot Movie. Uh, you can see what we've got here. We've basically got the best of the breed uh, Linux applications when it comes to video. And I wish I'd found this a couple of years ago because honestly, uh, yes, things were a bit lost uh, as to what to do with media side of things. But I have developed... Uh, definitely a taste for all of these applications. I have used them at one point or another, and uh, and it's also great to see that they've included WinFF, which is like, uh, which is actually a Wine-based uh, FFmpeg uh, front end, if you will. So we've uh, we've just got all the best video um, video applications out there. Handbrake obviously is for ripping your DVDs. Caden Live for editing. VLC Movie Player. They're just movie players. Lives. This is like a, a live video broadcasting tool. So if you're doing live video mixing at an event or something like that, that's what will get you through. Cinderella is a more advanced video editor. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not that user-friendly. Cheese, of course, is the webcam. Avid Emux is just basic video tweaking. WinFF is, as I said, the, the front end for FFmpeg. OpenShot is a very friendly video editor and desktop recorder of course is gtk record my desktop and of course the dvd one is for creating your dvd so that's all fun stuff and then we've got via vst plugins which is the same kind of idea as the jack plugins as you can see here these are kind of self-explanatory we've got ambience reverb analog delay etc etc all the way through so whatever audio work you're wanting to do you've got tons of plugins to have fun and muck around with Honestly, this is a really solid distribution, uh, even just as a concept. They have been running this distribution for quite a while now, but honestly, I think they've really done a good job in just keeping some stable software at the core, which of course is Debian 5.0, which by Linux standards is pretty old now. But they've uh, combined it with the latest Linux kernel, which is 2.6.39, and it's the latest stable more or less. But they put a bunch of good tools into it. They really polish it up to up to its absolute shining point. And uh, and we've got some and they and they throw in some fantastic little extras in here as well, such as manuals. Everybody loves to read the manuals. So we've also got an auto tune. Uh, we've got an auto tune manual here, which they all come as PDFs, so it's very very convenient. And basically, it just explains all the uh, how to how to function these different plugins, and etc. Uh, etc. Et as you can see here, the auto talent reference card. You can see just how exactly this thing works and how to get the most out of it. They give you extra goodies, and they give you, uh, as you can see, we've got a whole bunch more plugins, drum samples. This is just the ultimate multimedia creation station. And I know that sounds really wordy, but they also give you some nice uh, wallpapers here as, as an extra as well, because uh, they don't want your uh, multimedia desktop looking too drab now, do they? Uh, so they've got lots of good stuff in here. It's definitely worth checking out if you are at all multimedia inclined. And I seriously recommend uh, at even professionals to take a look at this stuff and see and see just what's available out there. So a quick note about the installer. Uh, the installer is a little bit fiddly. It's not the most easy to use installer that I've come across. Uh, so it does require a little bit of knowledge beforehand. But having said that, uh, it does have very solid documentation on the PDF on the desktop. So if you run into issues, you can uh, step through that PDF and that is a lot of help. But the installer is a tiny a bit touchy. Uh, it's rock solid. I have used it on native hardware and I haven't had any issues whatsoever, which is really surprising. 
um, considering that this is quite an old distribution with the latest Linux kernel plopped in the in the middle of it. Um, fantastic applications. They keep everything. They, pretty much every uh, piece of software in this distribution is up to its latest. Uh, but obviously. Debian 5.0, they've got some specific repositories set up, so you don't necessarily have to keep it up to date all the time. It can, it can be, it can happily sit on a machine in your basement and, uh, and, and wear away for months to come, I'm sure. But definitely, if you are at all a, an audio visual graphics developer of any sort, you definitely need to give AV Linux a go because it is the multimedia Linux operating system. So,